And I'm also very excited about my next guest who needs no introduction, but I get to provide one anyway. Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina is a tireless pro-life lawmaker. He was the driving force behind the 2004 Unborn Victims of Violence Act landmark registration legislation that first recognized an unborn child as a legal victim in federal law. And he is the lead sponsor, as Senator Daines just told us, of the pain capable Unborn Child Protection Act in the Senate. He has numerous accomplishments, too lengthy to list today so as to be respective of his time, but it is my great pleasure to introduce to you the senior senator from South Carolina. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> I'm going to do an interview here with Tony in a moment, but to the Family Research Council, you matter. So here's your marching orders, no pun intended. We're going to start with the idea that majorities matter. There would be no vote forthcoming on the pain capable bill if Mitch McConnell were not the majority leader. I know you're frustrated with us at times and we get frustrated with ourselves. But when we have the debate on the floor of the United States Senate and when we ask people to vote, it will be a result of all the efforts you put in over the years to get us the majorities. My goal, I don't think we're going to get 60, but we're going to get over 50 and one day we'll get 60 plus. How does that day arrive? Uh, by you doing what Mike, uh, Steve Daines told you to do, which is to tell your friends, your neighbors, what we're talking about here. 54% of pro-choice people, when they understand our bill, are for it. How can that be? It just makes a lot of sense. So what are we trying to accomplish here? <clears throat> At 20 weeks in the birthing process, a physician cannot operate on the unborn child without providing anesthesia. Why is that? Medical science tells us to operate on the baby to save their life at 20 weeks. You should provide anesthesia because they're so pain sensitive. The question for the country is, is it okay to have abortion on demand? No. You know how many countries allow abortion on demand at 20 weeks? Seven. Do you know who's in that group? China and Iran. I want out. Do you want out? <laughs> okay. We're a better people than that. So there's seven nations on the entire planet that allow abortion on demand at 20 weeks, the fifth month of the pregnancy. And there's a reason for that. It's not the right thing to do. If you look at a medical encyclopedia as they advise young parents how to interact with the unborn child, Along this time, they say you need to sing to your baby because they can begin to recognize your voice. If we should sing to the baby, maybe we shouldn't have abortion on demand. So here's the point of the bill. Under Roe v. Wade, the only time that the government has a compelling interest to protect the unborn child is after what? Medical viability. I would argue that that concept has changed from 1973 to now. There are actually examples of people surviving birth at 20 weeks. But we're not asking <clears throat> for that to be the reason we protect the unborn. The reason that we're advancing here is that a child feels excruciating pain in the fifth month and the state the government has an interest in protecting an unborn child from experiencing excruciating pain. That's a different legal theory than Roe v. Wade. It will be the first time, if we're successful, to grant governments at the state and federal level the ability to protect the unborn apart from medical viability. This is a very big deal. 20 states have already enacted a version of the law that I am introducing because of people like you. The closer you get to 33, the more likely we are to get to 60 up here. Remember the partial birth abortion debate. Over a decade of trying and trying and trying do we eventually broke through. The Unborn to Victims of Violence Act that I offered in 2004 <clears throat> took years. The Lacey Peterson case, where she was murdered by her husband, and under California law, Scott Peterson was charged with two crimes, 
the mother and the child. So that became law at the federal level because of people like you. Partial birth abortion passed because of people like you. The Pain Capable Unborn Child Protection Act will pass because of people like you. And the reason it will, be, it will pass is there's people who are not activists that will side with you when they hear what you're telling them. So you've got a challenge, and I have a challenge, to educate the public about what we're trying to do. We're trying to do a good thing, not a bad thing. We're trying to get out of a club of seven nations. We're trying to be like the rest of the world, not the outlier. We're trying to say as the American people, we do not want abortion on demand in the fifth month of the pregnancy. Why? Because that does not make us a better nation. We don't want to be a nation that allows abortion on demand when science tells us that the baby feels excruciating pain and doctors tell us I can save that baby's life but I'm going to put them under anesthesia because I don't want to hurt the baby in the effort of saving their life. It won't be long. It won't be this year, but it won't be long. Our day is coming. This is the centerpiece of the pro-life movement. And this is a problem. This affects thousands, not hundreds. So Tony and the Family Research Council and to all those of you who are listening, <clears throat> this is worthy of our time and our effort. And if you want to make America great again, still in somebody else's slogan, <laughs> let's pass this bill. Thank you.